S S A N says, why is the world listening to India now and not ever before? What have we done that we are in a position in this position now? And what mistakes to avoid so that the young population helps in the growth of the country? Binge watch and learn about geopolitics on Ask Abhijit Clips. Subscribe now. Yes, the world is listening to India now. Though in India figures in most global conversations. Uh, great power conversations and what's what have we done now that we did not do before well firstly we have a very strong independent foreign policy which prioritizes india's national interest over everything else over everything else we don't care what the americans want we don't care what the chinese want what the russians want we care what we what is in our best interest and we will always put that first and that's how we are dealing with international relations when you do that people respect you when you have self respect people respect you in the past, India, the the stance of the Indian government and the in the former prime ministers was that India has no ambition of being a great power. We 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 have no ambitions of being great. And our foreign policy was oftentimes, I would say, it would take a backseat to the to the national priorities of other nations. That's how it was always done in the past. It's the first time since 1947 India has a robust, independent foreign policy that always puts India's national interest first. So that's the first thing. And secondly, India's economy is growing again. It stagnated for a long time, but it's now growing again. And it's projected to keep growing. And India is focusing on infrastructure development, which is going to speed up the economy. So you, India is building 30, 40, 50 kilometers of highways every single day. Imagine that. We are bringing in hundreds of new high-tech trains, the Vande Bharat trains. And we're going to soon, in the next 5-10 years, maybe start building more bullet trains. We are building new airports almost every year. A few new airports come in. We are significantly expanding our air, airline fleet. The number of air, uh, airports that we have. Tier 2, Tier 3 cities are also going to be com uh, connected by air. It's now affordable for just about anybody to, tra to travel by air. In the past, it was like a big luxury for someone to travel by air. So everything is changing now. The data rates are extremely low in India. The internet data rates lowest in the world, I think. India is totally transforming and revolutionizing uh, the entire infrastructure that we have. That's what this government is doing. It's These things have never done before. The entire country is more or less electrified. Obviously, there'll be some spots somewhere or the other where the electricity has not reached yet because we have an extremely challenging terrain in some parts of India. More or less, the entire country is now electrified. You can see the results from space now in nighttime images we we are you know if you look at the nighttime imagery of nations and the kind of light output is there india surpasses china already by by a big margin if you if you consider that as a yardstick there's so and, and everybody has bank accounts now everybody has insurance these things they are going to bear fruit in the next 10 20 30 years you you will not see the result immediately but it's it's already put india on the cusp of a major economic explosion productivity and and growth of the economy that's what's happening the world sees it they they can't help but see it and when you do this the world will take you extremely seriously you place an order for 800 aircraft roughly it's going to create a million jobs in the us and many more in in france uh, in france and the uk we are able to now affect the world's economy through our own actions that serve our interests. In, when you put yourself, when you do the really hard work and you put yourself in this position, the world will listen to you. The world will take you extremely seriously and they will respect you. So that is what India has done. It has been done by the government of Narendra Modi, nobody else. Well, that, is a fa that is a fact. No one else did it. Mr. Manmohan Singh did nothing of this sort. Um, neither did the prime ministers who came before Mr. Manmohan Singh. Dr. Manmohan Singh, sorry. So, so that's what's happened. It, India has never been taken seriously in the past. Only in the last five, six years, this has happened. And now they are taking India very seriously. And it's going to only increase in the, in the future. India is where China was in the 1990s. Right now, that's where we are. The Chinese were extremely serious about their growth, about their national interest. And the world started taking them seriously in the 1990s itself. They already said they had started talking about China as a potential superpower in the 1990s itself. India is now at that stage. They now understand that India is serious. India means business. India is not going to tolerate any nonsense. And that's why they are taking India seriously now. In the next five to ten years, they will they will most likely take India more seriously than they take China right now. It's a possibility if we do things right. So that's why this change has come about. It's come about because of the policies of the Narendra Modi government and the incredible hard work they've done. You may like him or hate him, I don't care what it is. Facts are facts. Now, what mistakes to avoid so that the young population helps in the growth of the country? Well, the mistake you avoid is you don't stop 
reforming the nation, reforming the government, governance system, reforming the bureaucracy, reforming everything, and you don't stop creating more infrastructure. We are just beginning. We have to we have to connect the entire nation thoroughly through highways, through railroads, through airports. We have to reform the bureaucracy. We have to reform the judiciary. We have to reform the governance system. We have to root out corruption, which is still a big issue. We have to reform the the political system. Uh, maybe bring in a new constitution, a new uh, maybe a presidential system. These are long term goals. Maybe next 10, 20 years, not immediately. But these things will truly catapult India to to a genuine, uh, maybe possibly even superpower status in the long run. So these things need to happen. The education system needs to be reformed. There are enormous challenges that need to be addressed. But these will happen organically as India's economic might and military might grows. Once you do that, there will be the larger is your economy, the more powerful is your economy and military, the less foreign interference there will there be in your internal matters. Right now, there is still a significant amount of foreign interference in our internal matters. All the millions of NGOs in India, many of them are funded from abroad. There are all kinds of activities that are happening within India. Many of India's, well, some of India's possibly, allegedly, institutions may be compromised, some would say. So all these things will be dealt with organically as India's military and economic might grows. Once you are that powerful, the world will not be in a position to interfere that much under the name of human rights or democracy or promoting this or that or whatever. It's none of your business. Get out of here. That's going to be the uh, message that we will give to them eventually. So that's what the government needs to keep doing. What can the young population do to grow to help grow the country? Well, be productive. Understand yourself. Understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. Focus on your strengths. Develop them more and be productive. Uh, if you are, if you if you take a nine to nine to five job, do your best in contributing to your company or to your employer. If you take up entrepreneurship, create more jobs. Create more jobs and create value that the society can actually benefit from. That's a simple thing. So raise your standards. Develop yourself into an all-round, uh, well-developed person who has reached who can reach the full extent of your potential and contribute to society in whatever way you can if everybody does that it's going to really transform society right now india unfortunately is to a large extent a nation of very low low standards chalta hai attitude right that's what they say so that needs to go so so the main thing you can do is to be is to raise your standards contribute more to society through whatever means you have and if you are into business or, or entrepreneurship create jobs create jobs and give new more people the opportunity to contribute in their own way to the nation to the society that's what you can do